Hey, it's Brent from the White Lab Workshop. In our last video, I showed how to build the top for this dining table. I needed to build the top before the frame because I was using techniques I'd never used before and wanted to make sure I was able to make adjustments to the size of it in case I made a mistake. And let's face it, I always make mistakes. And this project was no different. So I'm glad I waited to build the frame until the top was done and I could take the guesswork of sizing it out of the equation. Now we can get to it. I started out by rough cutting some 2x6s for the legs. We wanted some chunkier legs, so I glued two of the 2x6s together for each end. Rough cutting the length let me not be as concerned about matching up the ends perfectly during glue up. I used 2x6s for this instead of 2x4s because I could rip each set down into two legs at 3 inches by 3 inches. Rather than make my saw work over time to cut through all that chunkiness, I set the blade to cut a little more than half the depth on each pass. I sent it through once, then flipped it over and sent it through again. I wanted to make sure the glue lines looked symmetrical, so I measured the last rip cuts accordingly and finished cutting the legs down to 3 inches by 3 inches. Next, I cut the legs down to their final length with a stop block for repeatability. I used my router with a half inch straight bit and an edge guide to cut the mortises. I clamped another leg next to each piece to provide a little more support and keep the router base more stable. My plan was to cut the mortises all the way through the top of the legs to give as much vertical surface as I could to the tenons for strength. Here, you can see how I marked the tops of the legs to give myself a fighting chance of putting the mortises on the correct sides of the legs. Somehow, I managed to cut all the mortises without screwing up too badly. There was some slight variation on one or two of them from my handling of the router, but it wasn't something a little bit of chisel work wouldn't clean up. Here's a cool tip I learned. Leave a little overhang on the left side of your crosscut sled. Then you can clamp on an extension, such as a 2x2, for longer stop block capability. This is especially handy for when you have to keep everything mobile and your miter saw station is already tucked away. I used that cool tip to cut the aprons to length. Two longer and two shorter. Next, I set up a stop block to cut the shoulders for the tenons into the aprons. I raised the blade to cut about an eighth inch deep, and I cut those shoulders on what would be the inside and the outside of each apron. Then I raised the blade and stood the aprons up to cut the bottom shoulder completely, taking incremental passes to remove the material. I 
could have done the same thing for the front and back shoulders, but then I wouldn't get to use this sweet jig. This is a tenoning jig that my father-in-law gave me. I used it to get precisely cut shoulders by using a test cut piece to sneak up on the perfect position. Then I went to town cutting the rest of the tenons. All the while, Duke was there overseeing the operation. Then I pulled out my chisel to clean up the shoulders and round over the bottoms of the tenons. Since I used a router for the mortises, the bottoms are round and I figured this would be easier than squaring up the mortises themselves. I did a quick dry fit and did any further cleanup to make everything fit together nicely. I also labeled it all so I could put it back together the same way. Boy, I don't know about you, but I sure do love me some sanding. I also added an eighth inch round over to the four corners of each leg and the bottom two corners of the aprons, just to ease them up a bit. Time for glue up. I started with the sides to make things a little easier. This was pretty straightforward. Except for the fact that I started by putting one of the tenons into the wrong mortise. Whoops! What I didn't get a shot of is measuring and adjusting the top and bottom to make sure the legs don't flare out. After giving that time to set, I glued up the long aprons. The span was too much for any of my clamps, but they're pretty good at working together. I linked together two three-foot clamps to get across the span. While the frame cured, I cut and pre-drilled some small pieces to attach the top to the frame. I could have done this with pocket hole screws, but I made it this far without them, and I figured I may as well keep that trend up. Then I glued them to the frame. After letting the glue cure on everything for a day or so, I flipped the top over, positioned the frame, and screwed it down. What a relief that Duke and Dixie approved. They can be some pretty harsh critics. 
Finishing time. We learned on a previous project that my finishing technique leaves a little something to be desired. So my wife took a shot of finishing this table. She pre-treated the whole thing, then applied a dark stain, then a couple of coats of poly to round it out. Overall, I'm really happy with how this table came together. What I'm most excited about is that I gained practical experience with some cool new techniques. Well, new to me anyway. These are things I hope to use for many years to come. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button, consider subscribing to the channel, and please share this video with your crew. We've got a lot more woodworking projects of various sizes queued up, and we'd love to share them with you. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.